leader of the sleepover club. There are four of us and we sleep over at each other's houses. Francesca Thomas, what are you doing up there? Nothing! Ever notice when you're in trouble, you always get your full name? Funny thing is, Francesca Thomas never feels like me. I'm Frankie. Francesca Thomas is some girl who gets into trouble all the time. Actually, she should really get her act together. Seriously, it wasn't my fault. It was the whole sleepover club. We don't look for trouble. It finds us. And suddenly... You're grounded. Do you hear me? Apart from school, you are not to walk out that door. She did say door, didn't she? I wouldn't normally do this sort of thing. Promise. It's just I have this mega important letter I have to deliver. You'd understand if you knew the full story. It all started last week. It was Mufti Day at school. No, Mufti Day is one big excuse for all the girls to wear short skirts and tight no, t-shirts no, and show no, off to the boys. No, Personally, no. I don't care what boys think of me. So I just threw on anything. Hmm. For Kenny? The choice was easy. Kenny lived for Manchester United. She had a shirt for each day of the week, so she'd never be caught without one. Bliss got up at 4.30. She needed at least four hours to get ready. In case you haven't guessed, Fliss is obsessed by her appearance. Sometimes I wonder if that's all she cares about. Hi, guys. How do I look? See what I mean? Poor Linz woke up to a terrible surprise. Her first ever pimple. It was as if this pimple decided that since it was the first, it wanted to be the biggest and the best. Linz said it was like waking up with an extra nose. She even gave it a name, Michael, after her horrible twin brother. What's with her back? I've got a pimple. You can't go to school like that. Ooh. It looks fine. Honestly, you can hardly notice it. Don't worry, Linz. It's not like everyone can be gorgeous. <laughs> what? So, there we all were, walking to school like we did every day. <laughs> the sleepover club, plus Michael the pimple, ready to take on the world. And it felt good until... Hey, look! Rosie Cartwright was from England. She'd only been at our school a week. There was just something about her. Wow, she looks great in that outfit. That must be where she lives. She's pretty and rich. Maybe I should make friends with her. Has anyone told you you're incredibly superficial, Fliss? Yep, you. All the time, but Mum says it's only because you're threatened by my good looks. So, <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> Maybe Fliss is right. Maybe we should ask her to hang out. Why? Because she's new. I feel sorry for her. I don't know. She seems a bit... What? She doesn't speak English properly. She is English. Yeah, well, she doesn't speak Australian. I'm English too. Does that mean I don't speak Australian? You can't just ask anyone to hang out with us. We're the sleepover club. We have a reputation to uphold. And to be friends with us, you've got to be smart and funny and sophisticated. Mm. Hey guys, look at this. I can touch my nose with my hand. Mm. Did I say sophisticated? Mm. Yeah. Okay, 
So maybe I didn't really like Rosie. She was just too rosy. And the more I saw of her that week, the more convinced I became. I'm handing back your creative writing assignments. Though I have to say, most of them seem to lack any creativity whatsoever. Although there are one or two exceptions. Rosie, you wrote a wonderful story. We're very lucky to have you in the class. Francesca, looks like you've got some serious competition at last. <laughs> The worst thing about Rosie was that she was nice to the mortal enemy. The M&Ms consisted of Matthew, the leader, hey. and his friends Marco and Michael, Lindsay's twin brother. The M&Ms were put on this earth to make our lives as difficult as possible. Hey girls, I worked out why you call yourself a sleepover club. Because you're so boring, you bore each other to sleep. Ha ha, that's hilarious, Marco. It must have taken every inch of your pea-sized brain to come up with that. Funny thing is, none of us are laughing. What's going on with your chin, Linz? Looks as though a UFO might have landed. It's a pimple loser, a sign of adulthood and sophistication. Could have fooled me. <clears throat> Great catch, Matthew. Not. Here you go. Oh. Thanks. Come on. Can you believe that? She was flirting with an M&M. Did you think so? Totally. How could you tell? It was so obvious. The way she handed the ball back. You're not jealous of her, are you? Me? Jealous? No way. I'm so not jealous. I'm the opposite of jealous. What's the opposite of jealous? Uh, indifferent? On your marks. Set. Mr. Biceps was our PE teacher. His real name is Mr. Bilton, but... Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah. OK, guys, everyone down for blocks? I'll be at the other end. Go on, push up. Yeah, go on. Ah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> soon found out that Rosie could give as good as she got. Are we all here? Yes, yes sir. OK, now where's Matthew McDougall and his mates? They're still in the shower. If you boys don't get out here in the next ten seconds... Isn't that Rosie? But Mr Bilton... Get out here immediately or you'll be on detention for the rest of the year. We can't find our clothes. Now! Rosie, who do those belong to? <sighs> nice one. <laughs> Mr. Bill assumed we were all involved and reported us to our form teacher. She gave us the worst punishment of them all. Rose, how much chewing gum can one desk have? It was so worth it, though, just to see the look on those boys' faces. Not just their faces. It was the best way to get revenge, Rosie. Hey, this one's quite fresh. Don't even think about it. Francesca Thomas, if you've got time to be making faces, you can remove chewing gum from every classroom in this corridor. Better get a move on. What's up with her? She's normally quite nice for a teacher. Now, she's the mega grump from hell. This was really not my idea of a good time. 
get him explaining when I just <laughs> No, I will not calm down. This is the final straw, Adrian. I've had enough. What was I meant to do? I didn't want to get in more trouble with Ms Nichols, so I decided to keep a low profile. No more excuses, Adrian. It's over. <sighs> Can you believe Miss Nichols had a boyfriend? I never think of teachers having things like boyfriends. I wish I knew a way to cheer her up. Yeah, it's in our interest for her to be happy. While she's the mega grump, we're in trouble. You can say that again. So that's what we'll do. Sleep of a club solves teacher's love life. Sounds good to me. And she's bound to be happy when she finds a cute new boyfriend. So let's meet up at the cafe tomorrow and come up with a plan. What cafe? Beach Hut Cafe, that's where we all hang out. Okay, we'll all meet up tomorrow, 4 p.m. I'll see you tomorrow then. Bye. What does her dad do? He's a journalist. Her brother's away at college, I think. What about her mum? She hasn't mentioned her mum. Traitors. What? I can't believe you asked Rosie to hang out with us without us having a group discussion first. You can't win Frankie, she's the best. Yeah, she totally humiliated the M&Ms. You have so broken the sleepover code. We're supposed to be a democracy? That means voting on everything. Okay, let's take a vote. Who here is in favor of Rosie hanging out with us? Kenny's my oldest friend. I knew I could expect loyalty from her. Sorry, Frankie. That's three to one. Democracy doesn't work. I learned that in social studies. Come on, Frankie, what's wrong with her? She's too... You know, I like her. So do I. Me too. Good to see you studying so hard, Frankie. It's maths homework. What do you expect? I had the same problem with maths myself. Mum. There's this new girl at school, Rosie. She's from England. The other girls really like her. And you don't? It's not that I don't like her. It's more that I haven't made up my mind yet. What's she like? Well, I guess she's funny, pretty, cool looking, smart. Mmm. She does sound awful, Frankie. Better stay away from her. <laughs> It's just a sleepover club are perfect the way we are. There's four of us. We've been friends forever. I seem to remember Lynn's being the new girl a few years ago. Yeah, she was. But that was different. How was that different? Because Lynn's was, you know, Lynn's. She was funny, cool looking, smart, kind. Okay, okay, I get it. <laughs> oh, done. We call each other SOCs, or SOCs. Short for Sleepover Club, of course. Hi, SOCs. And Rosie. Frankie. Look, guys, Michael's nearly gone. Oh, he's definitely shrunk. I might even miss him when he goes. <laughs> so where are we going to find a gorgeous guy to make Ms Nichols happy? <laughs> I know, her perfect match. Who? Hi, Mr. Milton. Oh, would you like a hand with those? You're looking hot. <laughs> As in sweaty. Hot and sweaty. No, she's right, thanks. Um, how was your weekend? Francesca, it's Wednesday. The weekend was a while ago. Yeah? I mean, this weekend. How will your weekend be? Uh, good. I'm going sailing. Sailing's good. Better with another person, don't you think? Like, a girlfriend, maybe? If you had one. No, I don't. <laughs> but I've got to tell you, Francesca, I think you're a little too young for me. Uh, but I didn't mean that. No, it's just we're doing a project on relationships in the 21st century. And um, if you could describe your ideal woman, what would she be like? Uh, Venus Williams, the world's greatest tennis player. She's my perfect match. Oops. <laughs> I think so. That afternoon, we gathered at the Beach Hut Cafe to continue our plan. This could be harder than we thought. 
I doubt she even plays tennis. Just because he said Venus Williams doesn't mean he's not open to someone else. When Brad Pitt married Jennifer, I accepted that I had to look at other options. That was big of you, Fliss. Hello, ladies. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Mr. S. The usual, eh? Five very, very smoothies. Thanks, Mr. S. Uh, a new member of the club? Um, not exactly. Oh. Sort of. What if we lock Miss Nichols and Mr. Bilton in a tight space together? Like the broom closet near our classroom? Yeah, and? It'll be like in the movies. Whenever people are trapped together in tight places, they always end up, you know. I never knew what a wonderful person you were until we got trapped in here together and had quality time. In some ways, I hope they never find us. What about food? Who needs food when I have you? Oh, Mr. Bilton. Yeah, and what if it backfires? How the heck did we get locked in here? It was your fault. No, it was your fault. We could starve to death. Well, if I have to eat you, I'm not going to feel the least bit bad about it. Good. At least I don't have to look at your face all day. She's right. I think we should just set them up on a date. Yeah, but how? She's just going to have to ask him, isn't she? OK, is anyone here good at poetry? I'd rather vomit. Kenny, that's what people do when they're in love. Vomit? <laughs> write poetry. If I was Miss Nichols, what would I write to Mr. Bilton? I love your muscles. I love your muscles. I love your face. I love your face. You're the greatest specimen in the human race. You're my favourite dish. The pick of the catch. You're definitely my perfect match. Great, Rosie. OK, mm. so where are they going to meet? We need to think of a place that Ms Nichols goes already. Perfect. Ms Nichols always goes to the local supermarket just before four. I know, cos then she sees my auntie Sally. They do a French course together. The supermarket, how romantic. Meet me by the frozen peas. Can you think of anywhere better? The next day, Kenny, Fliss and I kept a lookout while Rosie and Linz put the letter into Mr. Bicep's pigeonhole. That day felt like the longest day in history, waiting to get to the supermarket to see our perfect match take place. We made sure we wouldn't be seen. I can't see a thing. I think we should move over. Shh! Miss Nichols! Now all we need is. There he is! Right on time for his day. Very good sign. She should choose the double layer extra soft. He's shopping. Maybe he's nervous before the big day. So he shops? He is in a supermarket, Frankie. That was close. We'll spy from the next hour. Up. What are they doing here? Quick, we don't want to miss anything. <laughs> they haven't even said hello. All they've done is smile at each other. But they do like the same pasta. That's a good sign. He must be nervous. Come on, Mr. Bilton, say something. I never know whether to go for the penne or the spaghetti. How lame was that? Shh. He's trying. Or oh, spaghetti school. Uh, or oh, oh, fettuccine. Yeah. All right. Um, are you, uh, I'm wondering whether I should go for the bow ties, um, for sort of a, a mince. Are they going to talk about pasta all day? Ouch!
I think you girls have some explaining to do. But, but, Miss Nichols, it was an accident. Someone pushed me. What were you all doing in here anyway? I think I can explain that, Miss Nichols. You can? Francesca, is this your letter? What letter? I didn't write any letter. It's got your initials on it. Hmm? Huh? Hmm? No, I didn't. It wasn't from me. There's been a mistake. It was supposed to be from Ms. Nichols. What? Me and my big mouth. We were only trying to help. Set you up on a date. We were going to lock you in the broom closet. Then we were worried it might backfire. Go and get yourself cleaned up. Right this instant. I really appreciate you dropping Francesca's bag around. <laughs> and rest assured, I'll be monitoring her letter writing in the future. It's no problem. <laughs> See you. While I waited for Mum to go ballistic on me, Linz was getting to the bottom of the mix-up. Come on, Linz, let me out. No way, not until you admit you were responsible. Oh, for what? For doctoring our letter to Mr Biceps and causing Fliss to fall on top of us all at the supermarket. Are you giggling, Michael Collins? <laughs> oh, no. Hay fever. Come on, I've got to go to cricket practice. Let me out. No way, not until we get a confession. Mm-mm. He admitted everything. Soon after Lynn's began spraying honeysuckle air freshener under the door. You already know the next bit. You're grounded, do you hear me? Apart from school, you are not to walk out that door. This is an official invitation to our next sleepover. Although Ms Nichols and Mr Bilton might not be the perfect match, Rosie Cartwright and the sleepover club could be. Preacher, didn't I? I love that cheesy, scary stuff. Of course, not everyone gets the same thrill out of it as me. <laughs> Poor Fliss. The M&Ms have been playing tricks like that on her for years. She's such an easy target. Meanwhile, our newest member, Rosie, from England, wasn't exactly endearing herself to Frankie. Poor Fliss. It's so mean of the M&Ms to tease her. Fliss needs to toughen up. Yep. Why? It's rule number three in the SOC rule book. Sleep over girls, show no fear. You have rules. And a rule book. Isn't that a bit like school? Rules and everything. You're a new member. I mean, a prospective new member. You wouldn't understand. It's fun, really. About games and stuff. You'll see when you come. I expect so. OK, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. See you. See ya. See you. What right does Rosie have to question club rules? It's no biggie, Frankie. 
She just sees things in a different perspective. And hey, all sleepover girls can't be the same, you know. No, but that's just the point. We are all the same. Well, at least we were until she arrived. That's what made the sleepover club so great. And it still is. Even greater with the five of us. And Lindsay's sleepover this weekend will be mega cool. That's a case in point. Because it's a birthday sleepover, the sleepover club have traditions. Rosie'd better get used to them. Either she joins in or she can go. Got that? Michael, we need to talk birthdays. This year I'd like to have my friends around. Yeah, me too. No, I mean for a birthday sleepover. Yeah, me too. But you can't. Yes, I can. I've already invited them. OK. Then we're going to have to have some rules. Chess is a kind of twin thing we do, like negotiations. That's check, I think. No bangers, no whoopee cushions, no stink bombs. We get the TV, first sitting at tea, first call in the bathroom, and my bedroom's out of bounds. Check. We get the TV. And as for the rest, we'll let Dad decide. Kenny seems to really like Rosie. Of course she does. Rosie's totally cool. I guess. I was hoping Frankie had forgotten about the package. Are you absolutely sure about this? We always do it. It's the best bit. Let's talk about something mega important. Like food for your birthday. Mum's doing the usual spread. Entertainment? I thought we'd get a video. What kind of video? Maybe a scary one? Great idea, Lind. It's been ages since we had a good squeal. Or we could just have a fashion show. It's been so long since we've dressed up. The fashion show sounds like fun. Watching a scary movie isn't very birthday, is it? I'm not remotely interested in a fashion show. Unless it's a Manchester United winter collection. <laughs> scary movie it is, then. Did you find out what your evil twins planned? Oh, he might be having a few friends over. What? But they'll be going somewhere for sure. Nothing to worry about. Linz, the M&Ms are always worth worrying about. Our next round of birthday negotiations began early the next day. Ah, oh, what is that smell? Did you forget to shower again this morning? <laughs> so funny. What happened to the good old days when you two were friends? Only one way to sort this birthday fiasco fairly. Winner gets to choose whether they're inside or outside and you're both to stay out of each other's way at all times. Agreed? All right. Heads. Yes. That is so unfair. What I'm meant to do outside? You boys will think up something. We've got to get this one. Return of the undead. They're back for more blood, and this time, nothing can stop them. Oh, please. That's totally tacky. Personally, I thought we'd grown out of that kind of thing. Ooh. Not me. I can't get enough blood. Really? Can't we get something a little more adult? What? None of that vomit-inducing romance stuff. The question, Lens, is just how scared do you want to be? So scared you won't sleep for a week. So scared you'll chew through your sleeping bag? Yeah, that's scared. Undertaker always rings twice. Or teenage vampires unleashed. Now that Michael held me responsible for ruining his birthday, the M&Ms went back to their favourite pastime, planning the perfect payback. Result! Yes! Vampires. Uh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> what did those girls just get? Vampire film. Complete rubbish. So they want to be scared, do they? I can't wait for tonight. Can you? Especially the video. Vampires? Oh, yeah, they're my passion.
Come on, spit it out. I hate horror films. They give me nightmares. Why didn't you tell the others? I didn't want them to think I'm a wuss. Everyone's scared of something. I'm feeling pretty nervous about tonight. My first sleepover. Could I come over later, go over the list of what to take? Sure, why not? I'll keep my mind off vampires. <laughs> I'm getting better. I only had a couple of wipeouts this time. Although, I've still got loads of sand stuck in the of teeth. <laughs> Loser! Loser. <clears throat> not! So, Mikey, is it true the leftovers are cloned in you, member? Maybe they're going to keep on multiplying till they're everywhere, filling present bay, taking over the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just make sure they don't get in the way of your birthday, OK, Collins? No chance. What's the plan this year? Yeah, better be good. Bet you can't make it better than Matthew's go kart birthday. <laughs> Rocked. Shouldn't be too hard to beat Marco's wild and wet birthday, though. <laughs> it's not my fault that the whole place flooded just before we got there. It will be the best birthday ever. Don't you worry about that. Better be, we've got the best present for you. And hopefully we get to put it to some good use. <laughs> Hi, Fliss. Yeah, Frankie's. A movie about horses instead of a scary one. Fliss, forget it. We're watching the scary movie and that's final. That's Frankie, her usual diplomatic self. I think she was covering for Rosie. Huh? We don't know much about Rosie at all. She could be terrified of scary movies, scared of turtles, scared of standing on her head, or eating midnight feasts. What exactly are you getting at, Frankie? Linz, your birthday party now contains an undercover sleepover challenge. Is Rosie fearless enough to join the sleepover club? <laughs> what else? Oh, yes, slippers and pajamas. The more outrageous, the better for the sleeping bag striptease. I'm sorry? You'll get the hang of it. A sleeping bag, obviously. Mine's pink. It was so hard to find. A torch is vital. <laughs> and a sleepover diary. Most important. Not some exercise book. Something stylish. Mine's... Let me guess. Pink? Hmm. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoy yourself. I decided I'm not going. What? But it's Linz's birthday. She won't care. Of course she will. I've decided to stay home with Mum and Andy. We're going to watch a Barbra Streisand movie. <laughs> My mum used to like those films as well. You used to like them? My mum passed away a while ago. It's OK. I'm getting used to it now. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want you to think I was a bit of a sad case, I guess. It would be really good if you could come tonight. I've thought of a couple of things that may help lower the scare factor, if you're interested. <laughs> OK. Frankie, are you totally mad? No. I just think Rosie needs to show us she's got what it takes to be a member. She has. We've already decided. And judging by her enthusiasm in the video shop, she's pretty keen on scary movies. She might just be a good actress. I just want to make sure we're not making a mistake. You know what the SOC rule book says? All sleepover club girls must be fearless. You need to trust her, Frankie. She's one of us. tribe has spoken. But I don't understand. You should have voted Rosie off the island, not me. How could you do this to me? I'm your oldest friend. You went too far this time, Frankie. No! No! So there we were, relaxed and calmly waiting for our friends to arrive. But when they did arrive, they were none too happy. What are they doing here? I thought it had been worked out, Liz. It is. It'll be fine, honest. I won the toss. 
They'll be outside in the garden, nowhere near us. Mars would be too close. Happy birthday, Linz. Thanks. Remember, you can't open it yet. Why not? No presents until you know what. How could I forget? What I want to know is, why were they wearing wetsuits? I think we need to find out what they're up to. Can I come along? Sure. OK, you can be look out. Kenny and I will check out the children while you get ready for the birthday ritual. I'll help Lynn's organise things. <laughs> And an immature behaviour. No surprise there. Do you think they... They wouldn't dare. That's right. Lindsay's mum and dad would fry them alive. Hi. I'm Lindsay's friend. Rosie. You're one of the... Sleepover club. Yeah. Sort of. Maybe. Great music. Oh, thanks. I'll tell the band we have our first fan. No, really. You sounded totally professional. Oh, now all we need is a proper gig. Well, you'll get one. Definitely. No doubt about it. That's Linz's older brother, Tom. Hard to imagine, but some girls actually think he's cute. I think I could imagine that. <laughs> Come on. Are you ready, Linz? She's ready. Give, Give me a B. B! Give me a U! Give me an N! Give me another N! Give me a Y! Give me the birthday bunny! <laughs> birthday bunny, 12 years old today. <laughs> I twitch my nose and wiggle my ears and wave my paws and say, oh, I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs> I know. Isn't it fantastic? That's absolutely the last time anyone sees the birthday bunny. OK, Frankie? OK. Do you have a dog, Linz? No, why? Great look, Linz. Get him! Come and get it! Stop! It's a trap! Come inside! Quickly! <laughs> Soaking by the M&M's, Kenny was desperate to get to the blood and gore. She made me open my presents in record time. Thanks. So now can we please get to the movie? On your marks, get set, go. Frankie was anxious to start the secret sleepover challenge. Oh, um... I forgot my pillow. I'll just grab a cushion from downstairs. Will you help me find the right one? Kenny, Fliss, Linz? What about the cushion? Frankie's theory was that if we left Rosie alone watching a scary movie, she'd freak out and reveal herself as a wuss. Everyone except Frankie knew that wasn't going to happen. Did you find the right cushion? <laughs> Rosie was so onto us. 
Quick, you don't want to miss any more of the film. The others had forgotten about the M&Ms, but I had a feeling we hadn't seen the last of them. Mum's always said, it's when boys are quiet that you know they're up to something. We got the biggest size, just in case. What do you think? It's perfect. It finally became obvious to Frankie that it was Fliss that was scared of being scared, not Rosie. Fliss! Put a sock in it! Ow! Oh! You're singing! What? Stop singing. Sorry. A little to the left. Too far, over to the right. Shush! Sorry. All right, up you go. Me? But I'm scared of heights. <gasps> what happened? He's plunging his teeth into her neck. And now there's blood dripping down his chin. Spooky. and truly in the poo now. <laughs> Can you believe they ever thought they'd get away with it? What a payback. We have a new world record, my friends. 55 seconds! What? Bathroom speed record. Kenny's unbeatable. Meanwhile, the boys were breaking some records of their own. Arms up, come on. So, what happens now? Well, you passed your undercover test. I did. It says here in the SOC rule book. The book contains every single sleep of a secret and rule that ever existed. It's a written rule that all sleepover girls must be fearless. Who wrote that stupid rule? All the sleepover girls. Except for Fliss, of course. <laughs> so tonight, it's not just the birthday bunny that gets presents. Well, go on, open it. Membership card. Michelle, you're one of us now. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Great party, Collins. Yeah, can't wait till next year. Shut up. Story, 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 story. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's see. It was a dark and stormy night outside the walls of Stony Brook Manor. <laughs> Up in one of the chambers, an old man was watching and waiting. I heard a knock at the door. He went to answer it. And... <laughs> Michael, you smell. Yeah, I know, I know. You realise there's going to be payback for trying to scare us? <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to treasure the sight of you and Matthew covered in manure for the rest of my life. 
And I'm going to develop a hundred copies of the photo of you dressed as a bunny and hand them out at school. You wouldn't. Yeah, you're right, I wouldn't. Anyway, I've had a great birthday. I've had better. At least we both survived and none of our friends killed each other. Surely that's a result. Yeah, I guess. So, Fliss survived the evening with a little help from her friends. Rosie became an official member of the sleepover club, and despite the disastrous lead up, I had a great birthday. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time to scare my brother. Hanging around is just no fun when you're alone. I don't know about you, but mostly it's pretty hard. As one little speck in the universe to make much of a difference. Hope you don't think the stick on stars are a bit naff. And I can't go to sleep at night, like now. I start counting them. 810, 811. It's hopeless. I'm too excited. You see, the thing is, I found out this week that even little specks in the universe like me can make a difference. It all started with this totally dumb rule at school. This is where all year sevens have to sit and eat lunch. Humiliating, right? Well, last week, I decided enough was enough. I approached the situation in my usual rational way. This rule stinks. It discriminates against all year sevens. Why should we sit here like kinder kids while the rest of the school run free? It's time to say no. It's time to stand up for our rights. And down on our lunches. Who wants to sign the petition? Just what I wanted. Black bread. With friends like these, it's hard to be a visionary. But I knew that if we got everyone in the school to sign, Mrs. Poole would have to change the rules. I'll start with the basketball boys. Nothing to do with Ryan Scott, of course. I'm prepared to suffer for the cause. I'll do it later, Frankie. I've got my first meeting with the school newspaper commission. Perfect! This can be your first article for the school paper. Year seven, say no! Well, maybe it's just me, but where we eat our lunches is hardly groundbreaking journalism. Come on, Rosie. This is about the little people fighting the system. I was kind of looking for a story with depth, human interest, emotion, not pickles, cheese and tomatoes. <laughs> we got over 100 signatures that lunch hour. Not bad at all. Mrs. Paul said she was very impressed. She said she'd have a decision by next week. It was time to celebrate. Five extra strength, extra ice, fun in the sun smoothies, Mr. S. Coming right up, Frankie. You look like you've had a good day. Let's just say me and Nelson Mandela have a lot in common. Fat tasting shirts? Natural born leaders. <laughs> so, are you still able to help do the recycling? I'll be here. Ah, uh, do you want me to help? It's cool. I can handle it myself. Looking back, that was probably the worst thing I could have said. Frankie, sometimes I think I could slip right out that door and the whole cafe would keep running without me. Mr. S, the place would fall apart. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm thinking perhaps it's time to settle down and tend my tomatoes. What tomatoes? The ones that we plant when I retire. Excuse me? Only old people retire. You know, Frankie, I used to think that I was part of Crescent Bay, you know, part of the community. All the kids would come in after their first day in school and, uh, you know, have their ice cream cones and... I remember that. It was so cool. Yeah, but who am I kidding? You know, all those kids, what difference do I make to them? Who remembers the beach hut? Everybody! You're a total legend. <laughs> As we say in the trade, I've reached my use-by date, and if I'm not careful, I'll start going moldy. This was an emergency. Mr. S leaving the beach cafe, it was unthinkable. 
I figured if I could convince Mrs. Poole to change the lunch rule, convincing Mr. S that he was an essential part of all our lives would be a breeze. We just had to figure out how. I know, I know. We make a huge banner, like ginormous, saying we love you, Mr. S. And then we get someone to jump out of a plane with the banner right over the beach hut. Love the banner, don't know about the jumping. Okay, how about we make hundreds of those sandwich board thingies and get everyone we know to wear them? Tasteful flies would be much better and easier on the eye. That's it! At last, someone with taste. I found my story for the school paper. Mr. Stephanopoulos, unsung hero. Heart of the community. Cool! What about the banner and the sandwich boards? Great ideas. So, let's pick the best of them and get to work. went home, totally excited by our campaign, busting ourselves to hit the streets that afternoon. Can you turn it down, please? Tom? Tom! Come on, guys, this is a bedroom, not a mosh pit. I said... You know Lindsay's older brother Tom has a band, right? I said, could you not play so loud? It's meant to be loud. It's rock and roll. Let's call it a day, man. This band's going nowhere. Fast. L listen, I'm working on some new songs. Trust me, we're gonna make it. I don't know about you, man, but playing to your kid sister isn't my idea of making it. Tom, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to. Don't worry about it. He's probably right. We're rubbish. No way. I think your music's totally cool. Thanks, sis, but you and who else? That afternoon, we were ready to get out there and get the community behind Mr. S. OK, who's going to be sandwich board number two? Fliss? They're not exactly fashion statements. <laughs> Exactly how do you put this on? <laughs> I can't! Look at my shoes, the colours totally clash! Come on, Fliss, it'll be fun. <laughs> flyer and find out. <laughs> Save the beach hut cafe. The last thing we wanted was the M&Ms involved in our campaign. We were doing fantastically on our own. I would not be doing this for anyone but Mr. S. Well, it seems to be working. I mean, everyone's looking at us. Somehow doubt that. Desperate using those girls for advertising. I think it's time the M&Ms showed the leftovers how to do things properly. 
Hey, fellas. Hey, guys. <laughs> if it's customers Mr. S wants, it's customers he's going to get. <laughs> Mr. S is going to be so blown away. Totally. This is going to be so fabulous. No way he can leave the cafe now. Can't wait to see his face. Ah, Frankie, my hero! All these people have come to see me. I will never leave the cafe. You, Frankie, you will have free smoothies and pizza for the rest of your life! <laughs> You have ruined my life and my business. But all these people have come to ask you to stay. They hit tell you how much you mean to them. No, no. See? They come to redeem this voucher that you have been handing out. I'm ruined. Look, two for one. You know what that means? That means I sell them one smoothie and I give another way for free. Eh? You do the mathematics. The M&Ms, of course. Typical of them to get the whole thing upside down. Mr. S, this wasn't our idea. No time for excuses, all right? As of next week, I am officially retiring. Please, Mr. S, give us one more chance. Frankie, you're a good kid, and I love you as my daughter, but please, please, no more help. All right, all right. <laughs> Maybe it was some weird planetary alignment or something, but everyone was having a bad time that day. But you can't leave the band. No hard feelings, man. But that's other outfit actually do gigs. Yeah, but the Wandering Wildebeest, they play folk music. I know, but they get work, and we get paid. Give me a chance. I've just finished one of my new tunes. Have a listen. One song isn't going to do it, man. And Froggy and me, we're both totally overplaying in front of a mirror. Right, Froggy? Mm. If you haven't got an audience, you haven't got a band. No hard feelings. Okay, fine. I'll do it by myself. I don't need you guys. Hey, Mr. S. Still need that recycling sorted? Or am I banned forever? As long as you have no more of those wild schemes, eh? I just wanted you to know how important you were. I know, Frank. I know. But you know, that latest prank made me realize that I'm just getting too old for your kids. My grandma says you're only as old as you feel. Then I must be 150. Frank, I'm going to close the cafe this weekend. What can we do about Mr. S? He's made it pretty plain, Frankie. He doesn't want our help. We can't just let him leave. Sandwiches, anyone? After yesterday, I don't ever want to hear the word sandwiches again. Come on, Fles. The sandwich board thing wasn't so bad. I was humiliated in front of the cutest boy in the whole school. <laughs> On a scale of world disasters, it's not the worst thing that could happen. The worst thing that can happen is Mr. S leaving the beach hut. Crescent Bay just won't be the same. No band practice today? No band, no practice. You busted up. Go figure. So... What do we do about Mr. S? I don't know, but it's time to think outside the square. Sorry about the band. Linz will be pleased. We won't keep her from sleeping anymore. We love listening to you guys play. Poor with the other one, it plays rock and roll. Seriously, when I was in London, I'd get heaps of singles from new bands. And you guys are right up there. We could be good, but we don't have an audience, so what's the point? Go and find an audience. Where? We've never even played a single gig. Right now, being an accountant's looking pretty attractive. You shouldn't just give up. What you've got to do is think outside the square. Don't leave town. I said think outside the square, not the universe. But it's perfect. The band needs a venue. 
And we need a way of getting everyone together to tell Mr. S how much he's part of our lives. You're forgetting one small detail. Like what? The band is split up. Only because they couldn't get a gig. Now, they've got one. Mr. S will never agree to it. So we don't tell him? That we're holding a rock concert at the beach hut. I think he might notice. Not if we hold it outside. On the beach? Brilliant. And we invite everyone who's ever been to the beach hut to come along. It'll be huge. Awesome. Just let Mr. S try say nobody loves him. Now all we have to do is get Tom to agree to play. Leave that to me. No way. Don't you see? This is a win-win situation. Look, I love Mr. S. He's totally cool. He makes a wicked smoothie, but... But nothing. You used to hang out at the beach hut all the time. Exactly. And I've kind of moved on from Smoothieville. Look, what you need now is an audience. And we're offering you one. I don't know. Maybe we're not ready yet. You've been practicing for months. Yeah, and we haven't even got a decent name yet. Well, that's easy. How about... The Hut? The Hut? The Hut. Simple, to the point. It's not just the name, it's... You're a chicken. I am not chicken. You're a rock and roll band. Rock and roll bands need an audience. Well... Tom, you can't play in your bedroom forever. And screaming girls are screaming girls. OK, OK, OK. I'll think about it. How cool a rock band at the beach hut. We'll have to call the concert something funky. How about Mr. S rules? Oh, Mr. S rocks. <sighs> I've got it. Rock the hut. Perfecto. Cool. Now, what else do we need? A stage. Decoration. PA system. Banners, flyers. OK, OK, slow down. Let's do a list. Right. First of all... Yes, I know that, but we've only got 24 hours. Hello? Hi, Elton, darling. How are you? Yes, the yellow baby grand piano is standing by. I organised this weeks ago. Hi, Kylie. Yes, the Mile High Mirror Ball will be extraordinary. It looks fabulous. Sorry, what was that, Elton? Another call. Wrong phone. No, Kylie, but... Oh, it's you. So the sound system will arrive on time. Kylie, I can't hear you. There's a second. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. There's a second. It just can't be done. Even if I give up athletics training, gym, and swimming. There's got to be a way. With only five of us, brilliant though we are, we just can't do it. Oh, yes, we can. One good reason why we should help you out. Because you're caring and sharing? Gee whiz. When you put it like that, the answer's no. Come on, guys, I've wasted enough of our time. Don't you think you owe it to Mr. Stephanopoulos? How do you figure that? I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you give me no alternative. Mr. Stephanopoulos will be very interested to know who was responsible for the two-for-one disaster and closing down his cafe. Somehow, I knew they'd listen to the voice of reason. It was the big day. Mr. S had stuck to his word and closed the cafe. It was time to get to work. We had just two hours to turn the beachside into a rock venue. to convince Mr. S. Now he was retired, he was obliged to walk Megs on a regular basis, starting today. So that meant he was out of the way for a couple of hours. Genius. Testing. Testing. Thanks so much to the Academy for this award. I'd like to thank my mum and my dad, my grandma, and Megs, and my dog. Houston, we have a problem. What sort of problem? It's Tom. He hasn't shown. You're the roadies. You're meant to make sure this doesn't happen. Hey, your concert, your problem. Somebody do something! There you 
are. I can't do it. I can't go up there. That's just nerves. Everyone gets them. I can't even remember the opening line. As soon as you get on stage, you'll be cool. It's a great song, Tom. You'll be fine. It was a sellout. Everyone was there. Felicia's mum and Andy, Lindsay's mum and dad, kids who'd hung out at Mr S's years ago, and their kids. And of course, Mr S was there. Oh, and I was there too, doing my usual act of keeping a low profile. We all know why we're here today. Say a great big thank you to Mr Stephanopoulos for being part of our lives here in Crescent Bay. You rock, Mr S! Woo! Go, Mr S! Woo! Thanks, Mr S, from all of us. You're a total legend. Come on, Mr. Oh, yeah. What if they hate us? Their problem. Okay. I'll do it. You better. Thanks. Hey, don't think I'm doing this just for you. If you don't get on that stage and perform, I won't have an article to write. And then, you've blown two careers. So to celebrate the occasion, here's the hottest new band in town, The Hunt! Um, hi there. Ah, uh, thanks for coming. This one's called Don't Ask Me. Don't ask me questions. Don't ask me for answers Don't ask for reasons For what's in my mind One, two, three, four! Go ask a movie star Go ask a movie star Go ask a politician Cause they're the spin magician So many people here showing their support for me. You bet. <laughs> so the retirement plan's on hold? What retirement? I knew you couldn't leave us. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart for, for, for this. Hey, had a total ball. Mrs. Poole had decided that 105 signatures weren't enough to change her mind. She was adamant that all first years must eat their lunch at the table. Well, you can't win every battle, but it's amazing what happens when you think outside the square. Or should I say, outside the concrete. Hanging around is just no fun when you're alone. Something, right? Hey, over here. It's a tricky business being scared. Like, you think it'd be better to get all your fears out in the open. <laughs> you have no idea how much trouble that can cause. I 
shouldn't really tell you this because it's top secret sleepover club business. But I can trust you, right? Well, it all started with an innocent little mouse. <laughs> Acting like so, Linz, your room's clear and ready for sleeping bag action? It's a cute, furry little animal. So, Fliss, what are you bringing? I've got an anti-pimple spell. I'll bring chocolate so we can test it out. I'll bring... Has Sara looked in the mirror lately? The mouse should be the one on the chair screaming. Please, squeak, it's horrible. I'll take it away. She's scared of a mouse. Everyone's scared of something. Linz, we're trying to plan tonight's sleepover. That's it. What's it? Tonight's sleepover challenge. We can all reveal our darkest, most secret fear. Isn't that a bit lame? I mean, what's use in revealing your fear if you don't confront it? Even better. Leave it to me. Tonight's going to be awesome. It's got six different speeds, and an action joystick. You can't buy them here. It's even got a secret compartment. Oh, yeah? Show us then. Uh, I haven't found it. I get it. It's a secret, right? Hey, what's the horsepower on this baby? Don't know, but it's turbo powered, so it's mega fast. Only one way to find out. Be careful with it. Oh! Now that's cool. Come on, let me have a go. Now you see something. Yeah, yeah, just show it. Did you see that? It's faster than I thought. Oh, oh man. man, that's cool. Boys and their toys. How sad. Hey, bro, did you bring your rubber ducky too? Huh, so funny I forgot to laugh. Hmm. Have you really got a rubber ducky, man? The bar, stop it! I can't, it's out of control! <laughs> Fix it! Oh, oh no. my boat, you idiot! Those sleepover morons are so going to pay. Hold on, hold it. Almost got it. Oh, just hurry. Okay. Got it. <sighs> no dreams will be getting away from the dream catcher tonight. You have got to see this. This is the best. Can sleeping get any better? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I totally lost track of time planning fear lotto. Fear what -er? Tonight's sleepover challenge. I'll explain it all later. Good night, y'all. Don't stay up too late. Ow! Hey! 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 There's no time for this. We've got serious sleepover business to do. Better break out those serious business treats, then. <laughs> Welcome to Fear Lotto, girls. Tonight, we share our fears and have some fun and one of us will be lucky enough to get the chance to confront their fear. Stage one, we each write down our most secret fear, fold it up and put it in the bowl. There are to be no names or hints. It's got to be anonymous. What about handwriting? Won't that give it away? Good point. I know. Rosie, we can use your laptop. We can take it in turns to type out our fear, then print them up. Excellent. Stage two, we draw out the fear and read it the lucky last fear to be drawn will be the one we confront. Whoever's fear it is must own up. Stage three. We create a plan of action to confront and conquer the chosen fear. Together, we'll face the fear, and together, we'll beat it. Is it just me, or does this sound a bit complex? It's meant to be complex. It's a sleepover challenge. Is this totally necessary? Yes. <laughs> The fears have to be written in secret. No peeking. So, who's first? Alphabetical's best. Uh-uh, F-L before F-R. Isn't that F-E for Felicity? <laughs> Whatever. Me first. Mo. 
like. how many freckles you have. I like to think of them as sun kisses. How much air do you think is in here? How much air do you think is in here? Ouch! Oh, oh, Linz, be careful! So far, so good, right? Fialotto, piece of cake. of heights. We all wondered who that could be. Rosie thought she knew. Could it really be that Frankie was afraid of heights? Come on, what are you running? What are you I so can't deal with blood. Frankie was pretty sure about this one. <gasps> it's blood! It's jam. It's jam. Mm. <laughs> I'm so scared of sharks, I can barely look at the sea without wanting to puke. Obviously not Kenny. Nothing makes her want to puke. <laughs> I fear public humiliation. That one's stupid. Hey, no disrespecting the fears. Well, now we know that one's not Frankie's. Not necessarily. Maybe she's using reverse psychology. Lucky last fear. This is the one that we get to conquer. Whoever's fear it is must own up, though. So we can overcome it together. Whose turn is it? Mine. Fear was that? Typical. I never win anything, ever. But I had to win Fear Lotto. Bats. But you love all animals. Wasn't Sara scared of a little animal? This is different. Bats are heap scarier. You're not talking about cricket bats, are you? You didn't say anything about having to explain the fear. If we know more about it, we can help you overcome it better. OK. When I was little, Mum and Dad took Michael and me canoeing. We canoed all the way out the canal to Bat Hollow. Oh, you mean fruit bats! Oh, shh. Anyway, we were canoeing along when all of a sudden I got swooped. I could sense their bony, sticky claws, their spiky, creepy teeth, their weird eyes boring into me. All around me was flapping and squawking. Aren't bats nocturnal? What do they do when flapping around during the day? Squawking. Hang on. I remember this. They were seagulls after your sandwiches. But they could have been bats. In my mind, they were bats. And I've been scared of them ever since. But you're not scared of seagulls. No, bats. Just bats, OK? OK. Now what we need is a plan to help Lens confront her bat fear. You know what I said before about a piece of cake? <laughs> Forget it. The next day, things were about to get way trickier. Lost your brains again, bro. Are 
you sure you can get the boat? <laughs> boat? Unless you want to swim. The bats live on the canal, remember? No problemo. We can meet at my place and go to Bat Hollow from there. Where Linz can confront her fear. <laughs> Piece of cake. Yeah, it's too easy. I reckon we should get her to touch one. That'll cure her for sure. Kidding! Humor. You know, it helps in these situations. Kenny? Why don't you pay? Oh, humor! I get it! What? Humiliation. Heights. Is that a place? Mm. I've got it. Bats. Puke. Blood. Hang on, hang on. What have all these things got in common? They're torn up. Bats. Blood. Puke. They're all kind of gross. Exactly. Those leftover girls are planning something nasty. No points for guessing who's the target. Us. Mm. Why? <laughs> like those girls need a reason. Did they need a reason for smashing up your boat? No, and this, my friend, is our chance for major payback. We are so onto them. But guys, what exactly does this tell us? Uh, it tells us they're up to something. Does it say how or what? Not exactly. Then how will we know? The usual way. I'll just follow Lynn's. What do you wear to a fear conquering? Is it formal? Here's a clue. We'll be in a boat. <laughs> what color are the light jackets? I don't want to clash. Uh, uh, it's a big deal, isn't it, Linz? <laughs> oh, it's huge. Hey, I'll bring sandwiches and drinks. I'll bring fruit. Yeah, the bats will like that. <laughs> Synchronized watches? We'll get our stuff and meet at Frankie's jetty in an hour. Okay? Okay. Okay. Come on, you lot. This yellow is so harsh. It does nothing for your complexion. I mean, look at Lynn's. Sorry. Uh, um, I'll just shut up. Good idea. So this was it. Off to face stinky, creepy, horrible bats thanks to my friends. What are friends for, right? You go first. No, no, you. No, you can. It's all right. Oh, come on. Pump in. Let's go. Thanks. We don't have all day. Come on. Get Marco. Meet me at the canal. Pronto. I've got the best idea. You've got to get me a few things, okay? You okay? Yep. Rosie, you don't have to hold so tight. I'm okay. You sure? Yeah. We're totally here for you if you start freaking out or whatever. Just let us know and we'll help. How? Uh... Group hug. <laughs> this is near where you got swooped, isn't it? Kenny! What? No, Kenny, we're ages away. So really, I'm fine. Just please, stop asking me. Yo. Yeah, I'm up near Denver's Bend. Hurry up. Take a look. What's the boat for? It's useless. Totally fried. I know. I did it, remember? Then what's it for? You'll soon see. It was right about here. They burst out of the trees and swooped all around me. This is Bat Hollow, right? Yeah. Well, where are the bats? <laughs> Sleeping. They're nocturnal, remember? So what do we do now? I guess we turn back. We can't exactly wake them up. No way! I didn't come all this way to wet out. If there's a bat hair, seeping or not, I'm going to find it and confront it. Who's with me? Go, Go sleepover! sleepover.
this is your baddest plan yet. And I mean that in a good way. Who said the boat was totally useless? <laughs> <laughs> Just take it easy getting off, OK? Grab the rope, Kenny. Behind you! It's a shark! It's a shark! Quick, get off the boat! <laughs> Frankie! There's a shark! Hurry up! Come in! I lost the rope! Oh, come in! Come in! Hurry up! <laughs> what makes this cat ride fall in? And, and Collins! <laughs> this just gets better and better. Two soggy sleepovers. <laughs> By now we twigged that Rosie was the one with shark fare issues. We were all scared, but Rosie had gone into total shutdown. Please, do it! Come on, Rosie! In the morning! Throw it to Rosie so you can tow her in! Staying in the canal so long. She's from England. Do it! You can do it! And what if she can't swim? Yeah, and maybe she's just being a total girl. Then I realized they'd been there the whole time. They were bats. And for some reason, I didn't find them scary at all. They were cute and furry and upside down. I'm a tree. I'm high. No. Hurry, grab my hand. <coughs> Come on, you can still make it. Uh, you? Blood? Yep, Francesca Thomas is afraid of blood. You can do it, Frankie. Take it from me. You'll be fine. Come on, grab my hand. I hate to admit it, but the M&Ms had been a little bit clever. Sharks do swim in the canals, so we never suspected this one of being fake. Until then. M&Ms. Those lousy cowards! Those M&Ms <laughs> won't know what hit them. <laughs> <laughs> told me about your plan. How did it go? It's guaranteed to be a total success. Rosie's sticky cordial plan was good, but Fliss's glitter idea rocked. 
Those M&Ms will be sparkling for weeks. Oh, hey, I'll make sure I never get in your way, huh? <laughs> Are you sure it's enough after all they put us through? We got to face our fears. That was the whole point of the fear lotto, right? I guess. Compared to Rosie being chomped by a shark, the whole height issue was pretty tame. That's as close to a shark as I ever want to be. But you confronted your fear. You were in the water with what you thought was a shark. You dealt with it. Yeah. Fear can be the thought of something as well as the reality of it. Yeah, like Lynn's in a seagull bats. <laughs> <laughs> Seagulls, bats, bring them on. After yesterday, I can face anything. You mean we can face anything? Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> Hang on. One of us didn't get to conquer. That's right. Fliss hadn't got to confront her fear of humiliation. Yet. So I didn't face my fear. I guess my day will come. Fliss! Ryan Scott alert. He's heading our way. sleepover club. We set out to confront one fair and end up confronting them all. I guess in a twisted way we have the M&Ms to thank for that. So yeah, bringing affairs out in the open can cause a heap of trouble. But with some help from your friends, you can also make them go away. <laughs> 